David and myself will uh, present to you the uh, new ICOL bulletin on tailing stamp safety. And for this uh, uh, seminar, we represent the uh, ICOL Commission on, uh, uh, Committee on Tailing Stamps. So I will start. Um, oh, next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, I will start with an introduction to ICOL. Uh, which is an international commission on large dams that would, was founded already in uh, 1928 in Paris. And uh, uh, it, the, the purpose of the commission is to share knowledge on uh, design, construction and operation of, of large dams. Uh, and uh, today we have uh, just over 100 uh, countries that are members of ICOLD, and that adds up to uh, approximately 10,000 individual members. So it's it's a big organization, and you can see in the photograph that it was already uh, a lot of people attending in the early days, even though traveling must have been really difficult compared to today at that time. Uh, there There is a meeting in a different country on a yearly basis. And the members are uh, essentially practicing engineers, geologists, and scientists. And uh, ICOL is an independent professional body. Next slide, please. Please. Uh, within ICOL, there are 29 working committees, and uh, most of them uh, uh, work uh, with the water dams and hydropower dams. So it's Committee L, uh, tailing stamps and waste lagoons that, that work with tailing stamps. Next slide, please. Uh, and the, the committee's work is documented in bulletins. And these are the bulletins uh, produced by the tailings committee, uh, which relate to tailing stamps. And uh, I, I will next slide talk to you about bulletin one uh, one to one, and then David Brett will take over and talk about the new bulletin. So this uh, uh, diagram shows you basically the history of tailing stamps. It's based on the data collected in bulletin one to one on tailing stamps failures up to uh, year 2000. Uh, the last decade, uh, we have added uh, data from failures after that. Uh, so. Tailing stamps has been built for about uh, 100 years or a bit more, uh, whereas water dams has been built for thousands of years. And the first tailing stamps in the beginning of 1900 was constructed uh, as a environmental measures. Before that, tailings was basically released into the environment or a nearby stream. And the first tailing stamps were designed by mining engineers. Uh, and the dams were fairly small. Uh, we don't have so many failures uh, registered from this time, uh, maybe because no failures happened or few failures happened or because failures were not reported. Uh, but, but nevertheless, in the 40s, when high capacity earth moving equipment was introduced, the dams could uh, be uh, increased and they became larger. Uh, and then uh, the number of tailing stamps failures also increased. And there, we had a peak in the 60s and 70s. Uh, there was a big dam failure in Chile in 1965 due to a big earthquake. And, and in this time, uh, um, geotechnical e engineering was introduced uh, uh, in dam design and construction. Uh, and this stopped the increasing of number of failures. And then in the 90s, uh, computer assisted uh, analysis for stability was introduced and later on um, uh, finite element analysis as well. And we can see that the number of failures drop. And the reason for that is basically that failures related to slope stability, but also seepage and foundation issues uh, became less. Uh, whereas uh, this graph also shows that structural and overtopping uh, causing failures has sort of more or less been the same. 
and the total number of failures today is still one to two big failures a year, which is not acceptable. So we need to, to improve the management of failings. And uh, for that reason, we started to work on this new ICOL bulletin. So with the next slide, I hand over to David Brett. Thank you, Annika. Uh, first of all, I'd say how pleased I am to be able to be in Budapest tonight rather than down in uh, Tasmania in Australia, but uh, it's very good to, to be here. So um, the interesting thing about the chart that Danica showed was it seemed to indicate that they were getting less failures, but if we go into future years from where we had that information, it's obvious that the number of failures isn't decreasing at all. It's still staying pretty consistently, like we're getting four or five failures a year. And, and as Danica said, one or two of those are quite serious with loss of life and major environmental impact. So I was pretty um, fortunate that uh, we had our um, ICOL symposium in uh, Ottawa in 2019. And we had an interesting presentation at that seminar about uh, the upcoming GISTM that was presented by Michael Davies from Tech Resources. And Michael explained the intention of the GISTM, which he explained as a triangle. If I could have the next section of the slide. With the GISTM um, principles and the specific commitments at the top of the triangle, with, uh, with that being supported by guidance from industry bodies such as ICMM, um, Mining Association of Canada, really delivering um, guidance on um, non-technical kind of stuff like governance. And then they're underneath the bottom part of the triangle supporting everything we need to have technical guidance, which was provided by um, industry bodies such as the um, ANCOLD, CDA, USS Stamps Society, and other localised bodies. But there was nothing really international as an international guideline, so ICOLD took this opportunity to um, start to develop our own technical guideline that would support the GISTM principles. Next slide, please. So the outcome of that has been the uh, Tailings Dam Safety, which is that which is called Bulletin 194. And uh, this was developed over the three years from that 2019 symposium. And the publish, publication of the bulletin has now been approved by the ICOLD uh, board at the symposium in Marseille in 2022, this year. So it's in the process of being printed and there'll be English and French versions that will be available shortly. As you can see, the, um, the Bulletin Working Group comprised tailings practitioners from many countries, Canada, Sweden, Australia, Brazil, Czech Republic, South Africa, United Kingdom and USA as the main authors. Uh, but we had a lot of support from other countries that you can see listed on, on the, uh, the slide there. And also a very comprehensive review process through ICOL member country committees that um, that really gave the, the bulletin the thorough review. Next slide, please. So I don't want to go through the bulletin in a lot of detail. We haven't got time, but you, hopefully you can read the uh, table of contents there. And just to summarise, it basically covers all aspects of a tailings dam life cycle right from the conception through to closure. Um, but we are particularly trying to focus on technical aspects. And you might see that closure is chapter three, um, which is pretty much up in the front of the, the guideline or the bulletin. And that's to represent the, um, the importance that our ICOL committee puts on the closure of these structures and really underpinned by the GISDM requirements. The rest of the bulletin uh, goes into the major aspects of of tailings and site characterization, which are very important. Um, and the, the, the 
design process also discusses risk management for these types of structures. And we have a special chapter on dam breach analysis, which is very important when we're looking at uh, the, the, the consequence classification of dams and the emergency preparedness and response planning that we might need to do. And then also we have an overview of construction and operational issues related to, to the dams. But I think the highlight of this bulletin is Appendix A and uh, sorry, B and C, and there is a, a bit of, um, I'm not sure if I've changed the numbers on the, the appendices later in the slides, but um, we used to have these as Appendix A and B, but and so that's why I kind of think about them like that. We did add another appendix that uh, for Appendix A, so push these up, up or down the list to Appendix B and C. But these are pretty important uh, parts of the document and they really focus on the the technical de detail of the behaviour of tailings under shear loading um, and they provide a framework for stability analysis of dams that rely on contractive tailings as part of the structures. So these are particularly tailings that are, are prone to liquefaction and, uh, and flow failure. Next slide please. The governance chapter tries to support um, what the IC, ICMM and other uh, other organisations are trying to do with their their guidelines, um, but we're trying to put a solid foundation on on these so that the the requirements of the GISTM can be understood and implemented. Um, this is an example of a typical um, Tailings Dam design and operation project where this is covered by a Tailings management system and explains the different. Uh, aspects that you'd have to go through in planning, implementation and operation of a, of a tailings dam. Next slide. As I said, the, uh, we're really emphasising the importance of closure and in trying to get the message that the consideration of closure has to start right at the project conceptual, conceptualisation. I mean, even things like doing mineral resource evaluation should include classification of potential waste materials to try and identify any environmental issues that might need to be taken into account from in the design and, and operation and then subsequent closure and really have a proper um, fully costed feasibility level closure plan should be developed right at the start of a project before it goes through to, to detailed design to make sure that it is going to be feasible and people understand what the closure plan is going to be. Next slide. Uh, we then have a consequence classification system, which is pretty similar to the one that's in the GISTM because basically the GISTM consequence classification was developed through consultation with our ICOL committee. Uh, we have made some small changes to the GISTM um, table by removing some information about the geochemistry of the tailings that was in in the table in the GISDM, but we think it's better to be outside the table and we've referenced in the text of our of our bulletin how you would assess the consequences or the potential consequences of environmental impact from um, geochemistry of, of the tailings. We've also removed the dollar values from the economic Im impacts because we think that they will change over time and we're trying to make our bulletin that will will um, will last into the future. Next slide. I won't go into detail with this, but we, if you could click the next one as well, we have a, um, a process of you know, exp explaining the design process in quite detail um, and covering all the aspects of the life cycle of the, of the tailings dam, uh, describing the process for determining the design basis, undertaking conceptual designs, including selection of the correct process and the, the tailings dam site using multi-criteria analysis, which is referred to in the GISTM, but we're ex explaining how to do it. Then we move into the discussion of the design process, which goes through pre-feasibility, feasibility, then detailed design, and then linking those into the construction and operational risk management. Next slide. Then we get into the detailed guidance on some of these major 
design parameters that we need to think about, particularly flood and earthquake design. Um, we provide a bit of detail about these and we have a slight difference once again to the GISTM, particularly in the flood design where we're recommending using probable maximum flood for extreme consequence category dams and uh, even for high and very high consequence category dams we are tying the um, the flood to the or the, the design flood to the PMF. We really think this is important because we need to determine a PMF um, or a similar extreme event with an uncertain likelihood in order to be able to extend the or extrapolate the historical rainfall records we have into the future for some of these more extreme events that we might end up or having to design for. Importantly, the ICOLD um, guidance here is talking about minimum parameters and in some cases it's likely that higher values might be warranted, uh, particularly for closure. We are looking at, um, at thinking that closure is is for a very long time. Difference There's a very, very big difference between water dams and tailings dams when you come to think about closure. With water dams we can remove the structures and get back to an original um, topography but with tailings dams we are left having to manage these um, potentially in perpetuity so we probably need to be thinking about having higher design parameters to allow for things like climate change. For the seismic design the critical question is is it possible to have an earthquake that can lead to liquefaction of the tailings because in a lot of the dams the tailings are an important part of the structural component. Um, go to the next slide please. Excuse me David, we are run out of time. Okay. If we can finish in two minutes, uh, we'll appreciate it. Yes, well I think we're pretty much there. Um, we do go through the stability analysis give uh, guidance on the on the factors of safety that should be required and if you can go to the next slide I think uh, importantly Appendix A gives a description of the various stress strain relationships for tailings materials and how to determine if they do exist in the field and then the next slide is our framework for describing how to analyse um, the appropriate technique and the factor of safety that we should be using in each case. So thanks for that. I'll just pass back to Annika for conclusion. Yeah, so, so to summarise our presentation, our conclusions are that uh, with this bulletin, ICOL have developed a comprehensive guideline covering all aspects of tailing stamp safety considerations, uh, with particular focus on tailings aspects, te sorry, te technical aspects to underpin uh, other industry initiatives, in particular attention to uh, stability assessment. So this is um, I called contribution to help eliminate future tailing dams failures. Uh, but important to understand is that just because the bulletin is being printed, uh, the problem is not solved. Uh, I think now with publishing the, of the bulletin, our real work starts by spreading the message and, and getting the knowledge out there to, to people who need to understand this. Thank you very much for your attention.